Hey guys, I'm Lou and today's video I'm doing my March book haul. I've been putting off this video because I have 52 books to show you. I was going to do my 20 seconds game but I have quite a few books that I want to talk for probably longer than 20 seconds so I thought it would be fair just to do the sort of normal typical book haul. It was my birthday at the beginning of March so I got a lot of gift cards from my friends and family which I'm really thankful for and I bought a lot of books. Only a few of them I bought for retail though. Quite a lot of them I got for second hand because I'm a second hand book sort of girl. And I don't really know what else there is I should say. Apart from I'm broke and let's get into it. Just as I was about to start a book haul I remembered something. <laughs> I was going to say that I have split this book all up into sections. There's a few clear sections, the rest are just books. So the first section that I'm going to go through are books that I have duplicates of. The first book is The Course of True Love and First Dates by Cassandra Clare. Yeah, just by Cassandra Clare. This is one of the short stories in the Bane Chronicles. I think this is the first date of Malik, of Magnus Bane and Alec Lightwood. And I really love this edition. I only got it for £2, which is a massive bargain because this normally goes for retail of £6.99 but I got it for £2 and just look at that not only is it really shiny but the inside it has the most pretty inside I really hope that they continue to do these editions because I absolutely love them I also have the Midnight Air version of this and it's just they're so pretty and they look so good together and just <sighs> And they're Magnus Bane, they're from the Bane Chronicles. I haven't seen them talked about on Booktube, but these are really pretty. The second duplicate I got is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is the Waterstones edition. I got it in the Angie Thomas event. I'll link my vlog of that up above and down below for you guys to go see. I really love Angie Thomas and I really love The Hate You Give. And she signed it. This book has been touched by Angie Thomas. The Hate You Give is about a girl called Star who witnesses her best friend Khalil being shot and murdered by the police and she has to deal with the consequences and whether or not she should speak out and find her own voice. I love this book. I've talked about this book literally since I began my channel. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to stop talking about it but it's such a good book and it's got sprayed edges and it's yellow, it can go to my yellow shelf. <laughs> The third duplicate I got, which I realise I should probably have done second, is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. This is the TV show edition. Because season 3 has recently just come out, I thought it would be a good idea to get the TV show <laughs> edition. I really love the TV show, I just love what they've done. There's a few things that I've not liked about it, but I've liked it enough to want to get the TV show edition. City of Bones is about a girl called Clary Frey. On her 16th birthday, she starts seeing some things. She starts seeing some leather-cladded teenagers killing some people in a nightclub. And she realises that perhaps the world that she knows is not really one that she's familiar with. I really love this series, if you can't tell from this shelf <laughs> up there. This is my fifth edition of City of Bones now and I'm probably going to get more in the future. The fourth duplicate I got in the month of March is Love, Simon by Becky Albertalli or Simon vs the Homo Sapiens Agenda but the movie cover. I really love this cover and I really love Nick Robinson on this cover. <laughs> I can't wait to watch the movie. It's not out yet in the UK and I'm really sad about it. It might be out by the time I actually upload this video but it's not out yet as I'm filming it and I'm really sad about it. The last duplicate, which is no longer really a duplicate, but I'm putting it in this section, is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I actually bought this book in January, but there was a Holly Black book event on the 20th of March, and I thought it'd be a good idea to buy another edition so you get the goodies at the event. And it's signed to me! Simon's upset. It's okay, Simon. You better stay there. What was I saying? Oh, it's signed to me! <laughs> it's signed in gold sharpie and I absolutely love it. I can't wait to read this book. Simon! <laughs> Why did you keep on falling down? If Simon takes City of Bones with him, I'm going to be really upset. I'm going to put them sideways. <laughs> I'm putting
turning him sideways. That's what you get, Simon. <laughs> I have no idea what I was talking about now. I really can't wait to read this book because I feel like it's going to be very me. Now let me show you the stuff that I got at the Holly Black event. So at the Holly Black event I got this bag and that's it. No, I'm joking, my stuff inside. I got this black candle which I have no idea what it smells like. It smells sickly sweet sort of like a plum i also got a sampler of the wicked king which is the second book in the series it comes out on the 8th of january i hope that i'm able to read the cruel prince before the 8th of january 2019 we also got this i believe it's prince Carden print we also got a fairy loop pin in case you don't know what the fairy loop logo looks like and last but not least we got this chocolate hearts. You also got a bookmark, but you also got this chocolate heart, which I haven't eaten yet because I wanted to show you guys. I'm gonna eat it now. Not now, but like after this video. So those were the things that I got from the Cruel Prince event and I'm really happy to have met Holly. My dad promised her that he'll pick up the Cruel Prince next, so we'll see if he keeps to that promise. So that was my pile of duplicates. Now I'm going to go with my pile of dissertation things so these are books that are Volvo one classics that i'm hoping to read in april or skim read in april the first book on this pile is the return of the soldier by rebecca west this was actually written in 1918 so this is as war classic as it can get this is a tale of chris baldry who is suffering from shell shock and amnesia and he gets sent home to recover his senses and hopefully heal. The second book is Goodbye to All That by Robert Graves. This is an autobiography of his time during World War One. The next book is Birdsong by Sebastian Fawkes. This was a TV show of Eddie Redmayne. Birdsong is set just before and during World War One and follows the life of Stephen. I don't really know much about this book other than the fact that it shows trench warfare which is sort of what I need. The fourth book is Regeneration by Pat Barker. I don't really know much about this book other than the fact that it's set during World War One. The next book is Parade's End by Ford Mannix Ford. Yeah, this was a TV show with Benedict Cumberbatch. I've only heard about it during my research into what books that I should pick up for my studies. This is a chunker of a book. It's definitely a classic in that sense. Braid's End deals with topics such as the psychological damage of war and sort of is a dedication to the young that fought in Mobile One. The next book I bought is All Quiet on the Western Front by Ulrike Marie Markey. I'm probably butchering the name. This book is a World War One German classic which follows the same themes of you know young boys going to fight in the war to death. So that was my pile of books my World War One studies. The next section is literally just going to be called the Holly Black part of the haul. The first set of Holly Black books that I bought are the Tithe series which consists of Tithe, Valiant and Ironside. I'm pretty sure the series is called Modern Fairy Tales actually, not Tithe, but I call it the Tithe series. I don't really know much about this series and I'm not even sure if Valiant is in this series but Goodreads says that it was a part of this series which is why I bought it. I know these two books follow Kay but to be honest I'm at the point in my life where anything remotely to do with fairies I will buy <laughs> and Holly Black is considered to be the queen of fairies so I bought this trilogy. I also bought The Curse Workers with book one being White Cat, book two being Red Glove and book three being Black Heart. I know this series has something to do with magic because I remember reading about it and being like yes I want to read it. Like I don't really know how to explain this series. <laughs> it's sort of like a murder magical mystery maybe. I'll tell you more about it when I actually get round to reading the series but I'm really looking forward to reading it. I might have to go on a Holly Black binge read. So that was my Holly Black section of the haul. Now the haul is not really split into categories it's sort of just like fantasy contemporary and hardbacks. Let me go through contemporaries first. The first book I have in the contemporary section is Freshers by Tom Ellen and Lucy Ivinson. I would say this is like a UK version of Fangirl. That's how I would market it as. It's the story of Luke and Phoebe going off to university or college and Phoebe is really happy to be going to the same university as Luke 
because she's had a crush on him for the longest time but Luke has recently just suffered through a breakup and is looking for an escape but the two clash collide during Freshers Week and everything changes. I'm really looking forward to reading this book and seeing if I could recommend it to people who love Fangirl. I feel like I will relate to this book more than Fangirl because it is set in the UK. Next book is The Astonishing Colour of After by Emily XR Pan. This book is about a girl called Leah and after her mum commits suicide she finds a letter addressed to her. The letter says I want you to remember but Leah doesn't understand its meaning. Leah ends up going to Taiwan to meet her grandparents for the first time and to try and attempt to unlock the family secrets. I'm really looking forward to this book. It is a chunker. It's really hurting my hand from me holding it. The next two books are a new adult companion series of Beautiful Bastard and Beautiful Stranger by Christina Lauren. I really loved Sweet Filthy Boy and when I saw these books they were incredibly cheap so I could not help but get them. Beautiful Bastard is a new adult office romance and I feel like Beautiful Stranger could be a secret sort of romance whether it be for fame or other reasons. The next book I got was Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. I think this is a new adult. This book is about a girl called Skye and her relationship with Dean who is the typical bad boy. I honestly don't really know much about this. I just want to go into Colleen Hoover blind and see if she deserves the love that she does or if she is the problematic writer that some make her out to be. So when I feel like a more analytical read I think I'll pick up this book. I also got It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I also don't really know much about this book. We'll see if she could potentially replace my Christina Lauren love but I doubt it. The next book I got is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. I think this is quite a hard-hitting contemporary. I think deals with abuse but also deals with the taboo subject of incest. The next book I got was The Wedding Date by Jasmine Gilroy. I'm actually currently reading it. This book features an interracial romance and I really love it. It makes me um, think about my best friend Alice. <laughs> this is the story of Alexa Monroe and Drew Nichols. They get trapped in an elevator and during the small talk Drew manages to convince Alexa to be his date to his ex-girlfriend's wedding. The final book I got in the contemporary paperback section of my haul is Goodbye Perfect by Sarah Bernard. This book is so shiny, I love it. Sarah Bernard wrote one of my favourite books of all time, A Quiet Kind of Thunder, and I have all her other books now but I have yet to read them. It's about a girl who discovers her best friend ran away with her English teacher and she has to deal with the emotions of that. So that was my paperback contemporary section. Now for the section that's anything remotely fantasy or sci-fi. The first book I got in the section was Our Dark Duet by V.E. Schwab. I honestly don't really know that much about this duology other than it deals with monsters and Kate and August being heirs to the city and them having to get along. The next book I got was The Becoming of Noah Shaw by Michelle Hodkin. This is the first book in the Noah Shaw trilogy which is a spin-off of the Mara and Daya trilogy. I honestly don't know what's going to happen in this book, I don't want to know. The Mara and Daya trilogy follows the journey of Mara Daya from a broken girl to a strong girl. In the first book Mara Daya is dealing with the consequences of being in an accident which killed her best friends. She's moved to a new school, I think she's also moved to a new place and she's dealing with the psychological aspects of that but there's also a paranormal aspect to the series which I'm not going to spoil. But I did enjoy the Mara Dyer series but I'm not sure if I would enjoy it during a second time read. But what I'm going to do is collect the Noah Shaw trilogy as it comes out and when I feel like rereading Mara Dyer, I'll reread Mara Dyer and read I'm sure. The next book I got was Mass Effect Retribution by Drew Karpshin. I'm probably butchering his name. This book is the third book in the Mass Effect novelization series written by Drew. This book follows the Mass Effect series after the events of Mass Effect 2. It deals with the elusive man and his agenda to make sure that humanity survives the reapers. The next book I got is Gemini by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This book is the second book in the Illuminae Files and it's told in a mixed media sort of format. I'm really looking forward to picking up this series because everyone and their mum 
has been talking about it, especially with the release of Obsidio. Next book I bought is Wayfarer by Alexandra Bakken. This story is a time travelling love story. I really enjoyed the time travelling aspect to the All Souls trilogy by Deborah Harkness. So I picked this book up because I feel like I'm going to want to binge read it when I finally get around to reading it. The next book that I bought is Reflection by Elizabeth Lim. This is a Mulan retelling from the A Twisted Tale series. I was hesitant to pick this book up because I haven't liked the books in the A Twisted Tale series so far. That's been written by Liz Braswell. I think it's Once Upon a Dream, A Whole New World and As Old as Time. So Sleeping Beauty, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast have all been retold. I gave all those books two out of five stars. I really wish that I didn't left it. I was really hesitant to pick this book up, but once I realised that it's written by someone else, I was excited to read it. Mulan is actually one of my favourite Disney princesses, even though Mulan's not really a princess. The next book that I bought was Vicious by P.E. Schwab. Literally all the small booktubers that I've watched has talked about Vicious at some point, so I felt like I had to buy it. Vicious is a story of Victor and Eli. They both share the same passions, and I think they sort of experiment on people with supernatural powers. I do know a few things about this series, but I don't know a whole lot, but I do want to go into the series blind. The next book that I bought was The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This story is about a girl called Alice, and when her grandmother dies, she inherits her home. Alice and her mother move into that house, I believe, and Alice's mother gets taken away with there being only one message of stay away from the Hazelwood. The next book that I bought was Pivot Point by Casey West. This is the story of Addison. Addison has the ability to predict people's choices. So for example, if you made the decision to get the bus versus the decision to walk to work and something happens on both those journeys, Addison would know. Addison finds out that her parents are getting a divorce and she has to choose between one of the parents. But with her abilities, she knows which life she could lead with each of them. With one of the parents living in this compound with people with other special abilities and with the other parent living in the real world. She can see the life that she shall lead and the love that she shall find. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Casey West can be capable of. The next book that I bought is A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Cluis. This book is set in Victorian London with a magical sort of aspect. I'm really into Victorian London after reading The Infernal Devices and Stalking Jack the Ripper. So as soon as I read Victorian London, I bought this book. <laughs> the next book that I bought is The Bells by Danielle Clayton. This book is about a group of people called the Bells who have the ability to change people's appearance, make them look more beautiful. The Bells follows Camilla, a girl who wants to work her way up the Queen's Court, but she realises that not everything is as what it may seem. The next book that I bought is Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foodie. I've been, I like, this book is a book that I really want to get to, it's just other books have been pushed forward, but this book is still really high on my TBR. This book is about a girl called Serena, and she works in a circus, a magical circus, and she has the ability to create illusions, but someone's killing her illusions, and she doesn't know why. The next book that I bought was Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. The saleswoman at Waterstones was really good at selling this book. The woman at Waterstones told me that it's a lot like Harry Potter, but Literally every middle grade book is sold to be just like Harry Potter. This book is about a girl called Morrigan Crow, and she is told that she's destined to die on her 11th birthday. But it turns out that's not true, and when she turns 11, she's whisked away to this magical world, and she's invited to join the Wondrous Society. Mystery, magic, and protection are hers, if she can only pass four impossible trials using exceptional talent. The next book that I bought is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. This book is about a princess siren called Lyra and she's cursed with humanity by the Sea Queen. Lyra must deliver the heart of a famous siren killer in order to regain her sirenness or remain a human forever. The next book that I bought is The Last... I can't even say it. The Last Wish 
by Andre. <laughs> oh, how do people say his surname? I, like, I literally forgot how people say his name, so I'm just going to say Andrew. <laughs> Please don't hate me. This is the first book in the Witcher series, and I really can't wait to read it. I've played the Witcher games, and I absolutely love them. I haven't finished any of them, though, but I want to. This is the story of Geralt of Rivia. He is a mercenary bounty hunter, demon killer. If you pay him money, he'll kill demons for you. And I'm really looking forward to reading this book because it's only about 200 pages long. So I'll zoom through this book. And the final book in this section is a book that everyone's been talking about, and that's Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I'm I'm sorry if I'm saying her name wrong. I think this story is about a girl called Zeely who has the ability to bring back magic to her people and she's going to take it. I don't really know much about this series. I sort of don't really want to because I want to have my own opinions when I actually go into reading this book. So those were my fantasy, sci-fi, middle grade, I don't know, <laughs> fantasy books section. Now to my hardbacks. I only have 10 more books to go guys. My camera ran out of memory so my position might have changed slightly. I'm sorry. The first book is American Panda by Gloria Chow. This is a book about a girl called May and she has to juggle between her own desires and the desires of her Taiwanese parents. Her Taiwanese parents want her to be a doctor, to find a nice Taiwanese boy and settle down and have Taiwanese children, but May doesn't really know if she wants that. But she doesn't want to follow in the footsteps of her brother who was cast out of her family. The next book that I bought is Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. This is about a girl called Alice who's asexual and Alice is starting off the summer on a down note. I think her girlfriend just broke up with her because she found out she was asexual. But then Alice finds herself attracted to her new co-worker, Takumi, and she has to figure out if she actually is asexual or not. The next book that I bought is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I got this book for £4. <laughs> this book is about a girl called Eleanor and she's not really living life. She has the same routine, she does the same stuff, she goes to work, she has a bottle of whiskey in the dream weekend. I think it's whiskey. No, it's two bottles of vodka. I don't know which is worse. <laughs> Life is pretty drab. But then one act of kindness shatters the world around Elena and she has to confront life. The next book that I bought is Your Welcome Universe by Whitney Gardner. After reading A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard, I really wanted to read books with more deaf representation and this one has it. This book is about a girl called Julia and she attends a school for deaf people. When she sees some slurs about her best friend graffitied on the walls of the school, she graffitis over it to protect her friend. But then the friend rats her out to the school. This causes Julia to be expelled from school and she has to attend normal school. In her spare time, Julia roams the suburbs finding good tagging spots. But then one day she realises that someone's adding on to her art and she gets dragged into a graffiti war. The next book that I bought was Replica by Lauren Oliver. I don't really know much about this book other than the fact that it's sort of two stories in one. You have the story of Lyra and you have the story of Gemma. I really love this cover because of that sort of switchy thing. All I really know is that the book is split in half. You could read Lyra's story and then Gemma's. <laughs> or you could read a chapter of each book. Lyra's story is about her escaping from a military place and she's a replica and Gemma discovers Lyra? I honestly don't know much about this series. The next book, or shall I say books, that I got was the Wayward Children series. Yeah, it's a series. With the first book being Every Heart a Doorway, the second one being Down on Monks and Sticks and Bones, and the third one being Beneath the Sugar Sky. Imagine Alice in Wonderland but Alice wanting to return to Wonderland but not being able to and the children have to learn to be back 
in the normal world. The second to last book in this haul is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is a contemporary mystery slash thriller. Truly Devious deals with a headmaster's wife and daughter being kidnapped and the kidnapper leaving the message truly devious on the school's walls. The mystery of the kidnapping has sort of become legend and a new student to the school is determined to find the answers. And the last book of this haul is A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This is a historical fiction book about a boy called Monty. He's in love with his best friend and they decide to travel around Europe but the best friend doesn't know that Monty's in love with him. Monty, Percy and Monty's sister Felicity travel around Europe. So that was my March book haul. I hope that you enjoy this video. Comment down below if you have read any of these books, if you haven't, if you want to read any of these books. I can't wait to talk to you guys. Thank you for watching and clicking on this video. I hope that you have a really good day and I hope to see you soon. Bye!